Next up, please welcome Jaganesh Prabhakaran, Senior Software Engineer on the ML Platform team at online retailer Zulily, where he focuses on building infrastructure to support ML workflows within the company. Today, Jaganesh is here to discuss how the key to Zulily's success is having a robust ML infrastructure and a wide array of ML solutions that use both structured and unstructured data. So with that, over to you, Jaganesh. Hi, everyone. My name is Jaganesh Prabhakaran. I work with the ML platform team at Zulily, where we help our data scientists and ML engineers accelerate their ML workflow with a platform. Before joining Zulily, I worked as data scientist at Oracle, where my primary responsibility was to build ML models on terabytes of graph data. I am excited to be here. And in today's talk, I'll be covering the ML platform that we have built within Zulily and how we leverage some of the open source tools such as Qflow, ModelDB, and Feast to build the platform. The work that I'll be sharing today is a combined effort of myself along with my colleagues. Let's go over the agenda for today. I'll give a brief overview of Zulily's business model and the application of machine learning within Zulily. Then we'll go over the reasons why we decided to build machine learning platform within Zulily. After that, I'll talk about how we envision ML workflow within with a machine learning platform and go over various choices of tools that we have made, such as Qflow, ModelDB, and Feast. I'll end it by showing how ML workflow looks within Zulily with the ML platform and talk about the challenges that we faced and the future work. Zulily is an online retailer with a highly complex business model. We sell thousands of products daily at highly discounted prices. We are a global marketplace for popular brands such as Under Armour, Crayola, as well as smaller boutique makers. A lot of times we don't have the inventories and don't purchase the products until our customers actually do. A business model includes event-based sales, and we have 100 plus events run daily on our websites and we curate those events uniquely to our customers. Our events are time bounded and typically last for about three days. Our mission is to deliver the best shopping experience for more. And to do this, we use analytics and machine learning. Our customers don't come to us for buying a specific item. They actually come to us for the shopping experience. When our customers, typically a mom, checks into our app, we want her to see something that almost immediately pulls her in and engages her to explore at that moment. When the app opens, she lands in our new today experience in which both events and how the events are presented is personalized to her. Then as she explores, perhaps by the category or by search, we are working to personalize the events and products that she finds. At Zulily, we use approaches that leverage our live data and dynamic feedback to continuously improve mom's experience in finding new ideas on what to buy. We use machine learning to personalize our customer shopping experience, and we also use it to uh, power our logistics and supply chain operations. As you can see, machine learning finds its place in various aspects of how we operate as a business. Now that we understand uh, the importance of machine learning within Zulily, I'll go through some of the motivations behind why we needed an ML platform. First and foremost, standardizing the training infrastructure. There was never a standard way of doing model training within the data science community uh, in Zulily. And the model training was done in sometimes depending on the data size on their local machine or private VM. And it was very difficult for data science to manage the resources as they were the ones who were responsible for starting and stopping the VM. There was no standard environment. We wanted to have a training infrastructure that helped our data scientists to experiment faster without having to worry about the boilerplate as they did with the virtual machine. Next was model metadata and uh, model metadata management. Uh, reproducing a production model was always a big challenge for us. Our data science teams, given the dynamic nature of our 
their model training where they quickly iterate over multiple hyperparameters and features to get a good model. Sometimes they might forget to document everything that they need that they did to build the model. And then now, six months from now, when now you want to recreate the model, you don't have all the sufficient documents. There were also like it was very difficult to keep track of all the history histo history of the model runs, like for instance, the features used, what are some of the parameters that we have tried. And it was never easy to discover what's in the existing model, like the data transformations, the features, and all of these things. And it also made a little bit difficult for data scientists to collaborate with each other because they didn't have like a standard tool that they can share all the model metadata metrics with each other. Next, we also wanted to reduce the discrepancy between the offline model training and online serving. Features used for model training were not exactly similar to what was available in online serving sometimes because feature mapping was done by MLEs who at certain times were working in silos from data scientists. And each model had their own set of features and every time we had to build a new model, feature engineering used to consume a lot of time. This warranted us to use a feature store that would enable uh, the users to iterate faster and reuse the features. We also wanted better management of user access control. Sometimes it is necessary for us to provide all the data access. Some, some um, um, sorry, uh, I made a mistake. So I'll start from the better management of user access control. Better management of user access control. Sometimes it is not necessary for us to provide all the data access uniformly across teams due to privacy and security requirements. And it can be really challenging if you don't have a standardized infra infrastructure. With the help of ML platform, we wanted to enable user access control across our data and application. And finally, last but not the least, we wanted a robust and scalable solution. It was very difficult to manage cost and the solution as, as we were growing as a team and the solution that we were using is not scalable. A lot of compute resources were being wasted. There was no way to monitor easily. And we also wanted a solution that would set us up as our teams and company grew. So these were some of the reasons that uh, that were behind that th th these were some of the reasons that were behind building the machine learning platform. Now let us take a look at how ML workflow will look like with a machine learning platform. As you can see here, a data scientist working on model building will go through multiple iterations of feature engineering, feature selection, and hyperparameter tuning. Having a model metrics meta management metadata tool will allow them to keep track of their experiment runs. The tool will allow them to log the hyperparameter choices, save models, feature names, model metrics, and so on. And while building this model, data scientists can use features that they have already used in production from our offline feature store or build new features. And once they have decided that they have the new feature that they would like to be part of the new model, they can work with our data engineers, machine learning engineers to get the feature into production and finally into a feature store. This will make the features available at both the places, offline and online. Offline to use it in future or right now for training and then online for the model serving. Any model that is put into place into production must also be Docker containerized. And it, it needs to go through multiple phases of A-B testing, experimentation, maybe multiple iterations as well before putting the model into production. Here's where model registry comes into picture. It allows you to govern, track, and manage your models that would be put into production. Finally, you would have applications that would support model deployment and in the model, in the supported frameworks such as TensorFlow, H2O, and so on, depending on what you use within the company. Model deployment application would allow you to do model inferencing. Here again, you have to consider like a lot of factors such as the latency requirement for the model, auto scaling of the model, depending on the workload, a fallback and failure mechanism, and so on. Once the model is in production, you would have a monitoring and model logging solution on top of it to monitor the production model. Monitoring is really important aspect of overall ML workflow as well. 
because it allows you to identify feature drift, performance shifts in model, and so on. The data from the model logging can be further used for doing like EDAs to build new features or understand the production model better. With this understanding of ML workflow, let us take a look at some of the tools that we use internally within Zulili to build the machine learning platform. We use Kubeflow, ModelDB, Feast, and a few in-house tools. One thing to note is that all of these tools are deployed on Kubernetes, which allows us to scale very easily. We use multi-cloud environment to support our machine learning workloads. That is, we train our model on GCP, that's Google Cloud Platform, and we serve our models on AWS. I'll, I'll now go a little bit deeper and dive into some of, some of the reasons behind why we chose these open source uh, libraries. Qflow is an open source project that is dedicated to making ML workflow simpler on Kubernetes. It's a widely adopted open source project within the ML community, and they have an active community and they follow release cycles for newer releases. They have a lot of project managers, program managers, engineers, data scientists working together to improve Kubeflow. Infrastructure abstraction from end user was really important for us too. Uh, for instance, Kubeflow allows users to provide Jupyter Notebook with resources. It allows you to run remote, remote training job. This was one of the really important feature for us because our data scientists used to keep Jupyter Notebook running on their browsers overnight sometime when they, were, they had to complete big training jobs. Support framework, it supports framework for hyperparameter tuning. Like all of these things allow data scientists to worry less about the infrastructure and work on what really matters, that is the machine learning model. Qflow also supports building pipelines. It allows users to build an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline using Qflow pipeline framework. Qflow provides user access control. Not only it was very simple for us to integrate with the internal identity management system, it allowed us to create a service account for individual user and provide data access and resource access selectively. Qflow uh, last like but not the least, like Qflow comes with Python SDK that allows you to dockerize the code with minimal effort, run hyperparameter job, and create pipeline. It removes a lot of boilerplate code for the data scientist, and obviously, it has a very rich UI and it's very very easy to use. Here, I'll go over some of the features of Qflow. As I mentioned before. Qflow allows you to spin a Jupyter Notebook. And here you can see that it's, it has like a start and stop button where you can just start where with just a click of a button, you can start or stop your Jupyter Notebook. It also will allow you to add, attach GPUs to the notebook and scale up and down your resources. Next, here you can see a pipeline run that allows you to run an end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline. And here's an example of UI that shows hyperparameter tuning job created from either the Jupyter Notebook or the pipelines. So as you can see, Qflow is really great. It also allows you to store the metadata uh, for your pipeline runs, and you can persist it in a persistent database uh, store in the backend. However, it was not very easy to search the metadata across multiple runs in Qflow. This is where we started looking for model metadata management solution. And we settled in on adopting model DB as our model metadata management tool. As I mentioned before, model DB is an open source ML model metadata and experiment management tool. Model DB fit very well with our existing infrastructure. And it was very easy for us to scale the application to meet our workload requirements. It provided persistent data store layer for our platform that allowed a user to track model across the model building lifecycle. It comes with a Python client, which is very simple and intuitive to use. ModelDB supports uploading model artifacts, such as plots or any other data that you want to store along with the model metrics and hyperparameter choices that you made to build the model. 
The model DB UI is very easy to use. You can search model experiment runs with the functionality such as filtering the experiment runs. It also allowed you to compare your metrics across multiple runs very easily. And uh, last but not the least, project maintenance of the model DB were very responsive to any issue that we were facing with the deployment. It was very easy for us to work with the project maintainers to actually contribute back a feature that we added internally for our use case back to the project. Here are some of the features of model DB that I'll quickly go through. As you can see, it's very easy to use the Python client to create an experiment run. All you need is really those four lines of code and to log model hyperparameters or even uploading artifacts is very similar to how I have shown uh, where I'm just logging the metric. The Python client also has functionality that would allow you to upload dictionary to support multiple uploads with a single function call. And these are a couple of screenshots from the UI that shows the experiment runs as well as charts showing comparison of different metrics across multiple experiment runs. Let us take a look at this ML workflow that I showed before. Model DB along with Qflow helps us to solve the offline training piece of the ML workflow. Another thing that we wanted to solve was to reduce the discrepancy between the offline training and the online model serving by using a feature store. We already had an in-house solution for online model serving, but we wanted something as a part of platform that would solve the problem of feature consistency across offline model training and online model serving. That is when we came across Feast. Feast reduced our feature engineering workload as once the feature is in production, it was exposed in um, it was exposed uh, for uh, our online serving as well as offline training thus providing consistency for our features across offline training and model serving this allowed us to reuse the features in production easily for newer model building process feast also comes with support for python golang and java these are some of the languages that we use internally across various applications this allowed us to integrate Feast easily into our system. It was also easy to integrate Feast with our existing infrastructure. Feast has an option to use BigQuery as an offline store, which was already part of our ML model training process. It allowed us to work across cloud platform. As I mentioned before, we do model training in Google Cloud Platform and we serve on AWS. Feast integrated very well in that paradigm and allowed us to train and serve across different platforms. And last but not the least, uh, as with other open source tools, Feast also has a very active open source community. And we have been able to contribute back features by working alongside the project maintainers. Now that we have looked at various tools that we use within the platform, let us take a look at our ML workflow again and how, and see how it is done at Zulily. As you can see here, Qflow replaces the EDA and model training block. Qflow has become our core infrastructure and for a platform for any data science workload. We have in-house solutions for model registry, have a, like uh, having a layer of model DB before the model registry has allowed us to actually uh, manage our model metadata and metrics easily with a friendly UI. And then by, and then as you can see, Feast solves the problem of feature store for us. And finally, we have some in-house solutions for model inferencing, model monitoring, and model logging. All of these tools are deployed on Kubernetes and that allows us to scale our solution easily with increasing workloads. Having an ML platform not only allowed us to standardize the ML workflow within the company, but it also allowed us to accelerate the ML workflow by reducing the time for our model training and putting the model into production. ML platforms allows us to keep track of our experiment runs, iterate faster while building new model, remove the boilerplate for our data scientists and engineers, and it also provides 
a scalable solution. Building an ML platform does come with its own set of challenges. These are some of the things you want to consider if you're trying to build an ML platform for your company. Although a lot of these open source projects will allow you to build an ML platform very quickly, they do iterate very quickly with newer versions as well. For example, Feast and Qflow now try to maintain either quarterly or semi-annual re release cycle. You can probably skip minor releases here and there, but if they do some breaking changes in the project and you're not up to pace with the open source community in adopting it internally, you might face difficulty while trying to upgrade the projects. Also, some of the changes that could break the system that you have internally. And again, this is where you actually need a team that can keep up with the pace of the open source project so that it's not a very big challenge for you. The next thing is you need people to manage the infrastructure with different skills. A lot of the managed services are available within cloud platform these days, but you'll still need to figure out configurations for those infrastructure and the networking. And things can get very complicated very quickly. And security is another aspect that you might want to consider while building this infrastructure. Finally, the adoption of ML platform is a major challenge. Change is not easy for anyone, especially for data scientists working on tighter deadlines. It is easy to do things the way you know, rather than learn newer, newer ways. We conducted multiple workshops and worked alongside a data scientist to drive the adoption of our ML platform. Here are some of the future work that we have planned. User access control across ML platform. Right now, we don't have user access control across all the applications in ML platform. We want to do that so that we can closely integrate all the applications supported by our ML platform. Also, it will allow us to tighten the security and prevent unintended consequences. We want to remove manual touch points for the model deployment. We don't have an automated process per se, and it still requires few manual touch points here and there before a model is getting to put into production by an ML engineer. We want to automate that aspect of the workflow as well. We are also working on building better model monitoring solution for our production models. As a company, we foster a culture where it is encouraged to give back to the open source community. We are always looking for opportunities to improve the open source project that we have adopted internally and contribute back to the community. We also always keep an eye for opportunities to open source our internal project so that the open source community can benefit from it. That's all for today's talk. I hope you enjoyed the talk. We are also hiring across various teams and a lot of positions across different levels. So please do check out our career website. Thank you for attending. And I would like to thank the MLOps organizers for giving me the opportunity to present. I would also like to thank my colleagues, Matt Ziegler, Priyank Gupta, Harmeet Singh, my manager, Sudhakar Krishnamurthy, and our product manager, Ryan Eddings, for supporting me to prepare for this talk. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.